Hello there, welcome back to the channel. In this video, you're going to see how to do the state management with Fluxer in Blazor. I think I don't have to do any introduction regarding Blazor. Blazor is a framework for building interactive client-side web UI with .NET. Uh, it has been promoted by Microsoft uh, recently, and we are going to see how to do uh, the state management because uh, Blazor has a component framework. So when you pass data from one component to another it can get messy so there are quite a few approaches where you can solve these problems so let's see how to do that with a flux of package as always i have created the blog post and the blog post has all the information so the fluxer is this library uh, created by uh, Peter Morris and uh, he based this library on Flux and Rita. So before starting, I should tell you like when to use it. So if you are not sure whether you need state management or not, you probably don't need state management uh, because if it is a uh, obvious solution, uh, it's it's uh, pretty easy to solve most of the problems which are um solved by fluxer in blazor pretty easily but uh, when your app grows that's when the fluxer makes sense uh, because uh, there are a lot of trade-offs uh, for using redux pattern because the number of boilerplate code you have to uh, write to achieve um, the working solution is already a lot so uh, you have to have a complex application to justify all this boilerplate code we will write so um, i'm going to create a blazer uh wasm project that's a web assembly project and then uh create um um and show you how to add fluxer and uh do a simple um counter app and also use um fx to fetch data from the server and you have all the code um, available here in the blog post and you can also just check out the important things like when to use fluxer and what is Fluxer here? So I have my terminal here. Let's create a empty Blazor project. So to create a Blazor Wasm, you just have to uh, run this command .NET uh, Blazor Wasm uh, with uh, new, and then I'm gonna give it a name called Fluxer with Blazor. Okay, let's open up the project. We have our empty Blazor application here, and you can come and see uh, it's there is nothing going on and uh let's try to run this application and then okay we ran the dotnet watch and that will trigger the hot reload and we have our blazer application running so this blazer application has a counter and then a fetch data section and then a home section so uh, right now the counter is the default counter so you can come here in the blazer um app and then you will see that oh, okay it's a very basic counter application it comes as a default app uh, you have a increment method and then a, a variable which increments the counter and um and then you have a weather forecast which is coming from the sample data which is actually here in as a json file so it's a pretty straightforward application it is designed uh to get you started uh, right away in the um, Blazor application development. Uh, yeah, so let's try to add Fluxer to it um, and then slowly uh, bring the state management into this uh, default application. So let's go back to the blog post and here you will have Fluxer packages. So we need these three packages, copy them and then can uh, think we can stop the terminal and then let's update the packages. Okay we have updated the packages now let's update the program.cs uh with fluxer okay just make sure you restore the um, nougat packages so that uh compiler doesn't play so the next step is uh, update the app.razor and go to the top date the store initialize so let's first take a look at the rules what are the rules these are kind of the rules which are similar to redux um if you don't know redux redux is um redux does pretty 
predictable state container for JavaScript applications, and uh, it has a predictable centralized state management. Uh, that is the inspiration for Fluxer as well. So Fluxer follows uh, the Redux library, and uh, and it has the same rules as uh, Redux. So the state should not should always be read only, and to alter the state, you should dispatch an action, and then the action uh, will be sent to reducers, and the reducer will change the action. And then we will use the um, and the UI will get notified by the change and then it re-renders. These are the core concepts you should know about state, action, and reducers because we will use this a lot. So let's create a counter state. So uh, this is uh, how this simple counter state uh, looks like. We just decorate it as a feature state and um, give it properties. And uh, you see here the get the the property only has a get um, it doesn't have any setter we are initializing the counter state with the con um, with the constructor and then we have a decoration saying it's a state and that this is a valid state so let's start adding state management classes to the uh, blazor application so i will add state and first state is counter and for counter we will have a file called counter state okay just copy this yeah now we have a state the next is the action action is a plain c sharp c sharp object uh it basically doesn't have anything so it's a empty class what it says is uh just it just says the increment the counter um and nothing else so we are basically letting the state management know hey you should increment the counter there is nothing else to say so i will add the counter okay we have our counter now let's create a reducer reducer ties the state and an action together so if you look at the reducer method here we have a decorator called reducer method so uh, this changes the um, reducer and it always returns a counter state every reducer returns a counter state and then it gets a state as an argument and then also action as an argument since our action is empty we can just return a new uh state with a click count plus one so this will increment the state count and let's copy this and then update okay so we have our uh, reducers our increment action and then the counter state now let's see how to use this state so we have to go and then update the counter page with the um sample here let's go to the pages counter delete everything and then so what's happening here it's first thing is we are using um two injects and the throwing okay let's add the imports as fluxor so that we don't have to we can get rid of all the error messages okay uh, what we added now is just added a import um the global import for um fluxor that kind of removes all the red squigglies in vs code now what what we are injecting is we are injecting a dispatcher and we are injecting a i state of counter state and in the counter state there is a value property with click count that has the count and in the click me we are saying increment count and the increment count actually dispatches an increment count action so whenever someone clicks on click me an action is dispatched this action will be caught by the reducer here and because the reducer is managing an action this action will be caught here and the state will be updated to a new state and the once the state is updated the ui will detect that there is a state change and then refresh automatically that's the idea. Okay, now let's go on the terminal, do a .NET watch and see what Okay, okay now we have our uh, application running. Click on the counter and then click me. 
you see the counter incrementing and then the ui changing and then the counter managing oh, sorry just counter keeping the state for a while there is a um, redux toolkit uh, available so if you click here you can easily um how do i say you can easily install it from the um, web store this is just an extension so you can come and click here on the state and then you can see what is the state so uh, every time you click you can see what happened now so we just can see what is the action and then the type is increment action there is no payload because it's an empty action and then action happened on that action what is the state status the count 11 so this is another cool extension which is used by redux um developers um which also works with blazor yeah so now we have our counter app running but this is very very basic um implementation so you click a button and then the change happens you don't need a redux library for this but if there is 15 16 components communicating with each other that's when this redux library makes sense or sorry the fluxor library makes sense on the other hand when you fetch data this is a good example so when you fetch data right now uh the fetch data is a pretty simple ajax call on on initialize but you won't always initialize on fetch um on fetch initialize async when there are a lot of components you will initialize these things um on a on demand basis um on each and every component based on the requirements on on those things the fx are really used so effect is um an side effect for an action so let's say you want to fetch the data and you will send a fetch data action instead of um going to reducers and then modifying it because the reducers job is just to update the state um, the effect is where you do manipulations of the data so to fetch a data you will um send a fetch data action and then once the data is received you will use the fetch data result action and the fetch data result will have a forecast with uh, a list of um web weather forecast and the weather state will have a loading state and also the data which is a uh, forecast and yeah the reducer also has um empty state which is like when you fetch the data we have to uh, set the is loading to true and then the forecast should be null but when the data result is available then the reducer should be uh, the is loading should be false and then the forecast should be forecast whatever the data which came back so this way um you can easily update the ui uh, based on your actions so you don't have to um, worry about how the ui is getting updated what is my state or you will know what your status because uh your status getting updated only by the reducers and you can easily manage um the um actions because actions are basic classes okay let's see um how to do this i will create a new folder called weather and this is the folder we will use for our fx so the first step is to create a um, fetch data action so let's go and create that our fetch data action is created the next step is to create the fetch data result act fetch data result has forecast and we have weather forecast right now which is available in the fetch data model so we we need to move that inside grid folder okay our weather forecast is a separate class now it's not embedded inside the fetch data using models and it comes from models okay Okay, the models are ready. Next step is the state and the reducers and the FX. Okay, so we have done everything we need, and now we can also go and update the fetch data page yes. so we are doing kind of the same here getting the dispatcher and also the weather weather state okay our fetch data is updated on initialize of fetch data we are dispatching a fetch data action this fetch data action will be captured by the effect the effect has a handle fetch data action which with the decoration of effect method and uh this uh 
handle pitch data action has action as a parameter and also as it uh, and also has a dispatcher and it also can inject the http so we are doing the http request here and checking if the data is not null if it is not null we are dispatching the data with the action called fetch data result action and then the uh, fetch data result action takes a parameter called forecast and then we are setting the forecast uh, which came back as a result um, as an data for the forecast this fetch data result action will be handled by the reducer in the reducer uh, there is a uh, reduce fetch data action and uh, it takes a state and also an action and it creates a new weather state with uh, property uh, is loading false and the forecast which was sent from the http request so once the reducer uh, changes the state the ui will automatically detect that the state has changed um, and it should update let's try to run this okay the counter is still working okay we are having a problem here because we are stuck in a loading state that means let's check what happens to the state here the state is it's loading false the forecast is already available in the state but it's not refreshing so when that happens that's probably because we forgot to tell the page it's a fluxor component uh, yes so just go and add a inherit fluxor component which tells um that uh this page is also a fluxor component so then we refresh again and then yeah now it works so we have our um, effects working and i we have our normal state working yeah um i recently came across this library and then used it in my project and it was really really helpful so i thought i should make a video regarding this and um as i said earlier if you have a very small project maybe this doesn't make sense but if you have a large project with complex forms where you are passing on uh, data from one place to another very frequently uh, this is one of the best ways to manage your state uh, in your um, application yes um yeah that's pretty much it for this video i will uh, soon see you again in another video bye bye